Morning guys, welcome to my stock market charting channel. I'm gonna do my best to get this video out as fast as possible, just to point out a couple trade ideas that I'm seeing. So let's get right into it. Give me a thumbs up if you guys find value in this content. All right, so Zoom video. I am short this stock as of uh, again today. I was short yesterday and uh, caught, you know, I, I got short yesterday and uh, it's um, working out so far. Now, what what's technically happening right now? Well, look, we've got this bearish rising wedge right here on Zoom and we have now gap down back into the wedge, the top of the wedge. So this is that fake out move that I was saying when you see these overshoots of a bearish rising wedge, oftentimes that is the, that's the bull trap basically. And sure enough, we're seeing that right here. So, um, and you can see, look at the hourly candle. We overshot it just slightly, failed. Again, overshot it, failed. So that's two hourly candles. We'll see if this one actually closes down here, but because um, we still have 30 minutes left in this candle. But that's so far two, two hourly candles that have overshot resistance and have both failed. This thing's set up for, for a move down. And it probably could happen quickly, just given the nature of how this thing ramped up. Um, this was kind of your, uh, your shutdown trade that people were buying into. I never really believed in the shutdown trade stocks, although they did ramp up pretty high. I mean, Zoom, you know, was a massive gainer. So um, now we're looking for the fade of that, of that momentum. So that looks good there. Um, and so we're going to kind of watch that, see if we have anything else going on. Yeah, and also you can see we have some di divergence uh, on the PPO here. Here's your negative di divergence right here. That's where you're making lower momentum, uh, you know, lower momentum uh, and higher prices. So we've had divergent highs there. And then also on the RSI, we have divergence as well. So negative divergence was set up, letting you know that this was probably gonna, this bull move was gonna end. We then had a bearish pattern and we had an overshoot, AKA bull trap that has now failed. So false breakout right here and we failed. So now this sets us up for a move at, probably at least down to the bottom of the wedge, uh, you know, is, is a good move and we'll have to wait and see what happens. But as of now, this continues to work. And so uh, I'm gonna remain short on this one. So I'll try to get this out quickly since we're near the level here that, you know, if you haven't gotten in, it might be something you wanna do. Again, this is just my opinion, not trading advice. <clears throat> next, next up is, next up, Walmart. You'll notice here, Walmart is down today while the S&P 500 is up. 2.5% Walmart's down. So Walmart continues to act weak. Walmart was the same pattern. So I'm just kind of reviewing this trade that I've had on for a little while now. It continues to work. Same pattern as Zoom. You have the bearish rising wedge. You have a false breakout right here, aka bull trap that was, uh, you know, that failed and we started to head lower and now we're weak. So it just continues to show that this stock is weak, even though the market is moving higher, Walmart is weak. So that's relative weakness. And so that looks good. Um, Zoom looks good. <clears throat> and let's continue. Um, oh, and also, so here's something interesting on the S&P 500. I've now got a pretty clean uh, bearish rising wedge right here in the S&P 500. So we have bearish rising wedge, we have divergences across the moment, momentum indicators. Um, ultimately, this is a bearish pattern. What we're looking for is some sort of a breakdown. So we are at resistance on this pattern and you can see I've got a couple reactions. One, two, three. This would make four if we get it. So what I'm waiting for though, because the momentum's been so strong, <clears throat> sometimes I would take a short right here at resistance in a bearish rising wedge, but I could easily see us overshooting that and creating that bull trap pattern that we see a lot. So what I'd rather wait for is I'll let the, you know, if the bull trap pattern wants to play out, I'll let that happen. And then I'll wait for that, that failure or, you know, recapture basically back down into the bearish rising wedge. And that would be a nice signal for um, getting short. Um, if this wants to continue to kind of 
ramp higher, I'll just let that kind of run. Um, or if it breaks down to the downside and starts breaking down, then that might be an opportunity to look for a short side trade. But for now, just going to let this continue to run. There's nothing that I want to take action on. But notice the bearish rising wedge and pay attention to that. That's important. Uh, and then also Q's has... Q's has a bearish rising wedge as well. It's just, it's not as big of a wedge like SPY, but it is setting up in this nice wedge pattern. We're breaking to the upside. So this could be that bull trap pattern. Um, it is breaking above resistance. So we have to wait and see what happens here, whether that fails and creates that bull trap. Uh, again, the entire time I've been looking for that bull trap, there's been no signal of a bull trap yet. So we need to wait and see if we can get that. Um, we don't have any bull traps yet. And bull traps are good. When you see the, a bull trap or a false breakdown, usually that is going to you know, trigger uh, the next wave of, of major selling. So that's what we're watching for there. Again, no, nothing to take action on. Um, it is actually at all-time highs as well, uh, intraday. So we'll see where the close ends up being. <clears throat> All right, XLV. I decided to exit out of this one today. Um, took a small loss. It wasn't very... It wasn't big because this thing hasn't really been moving up. It's just been grinding sideways. I was waiting for some sort of a breakdown, but I didn't like this price action right up in here where we were just kind of hovering on resistance and it looks like they're trying to pop it. You know, Well, they are popping it today. So I, I got out right at resistance right there. Um, and just with the momentum in the market, I just figured this one was going to probably catch a bit as well and do some sort of ramp higher so still could be a bull trap but i don't want to ride that bull trap up so just got out of that one we'll wait and see on on this one what happens again I, you know the markets might be set up for just bull traps all across the board but again we have to wait to see if they show up this is just, you know i'm just you know ultimately speculating that there will be a bull trap uh, because we until we see it, it you know we we don't know but it is uh, possible to be a setup, just like what we've seen in Walmart here, just like what we've seen in Zoom right here. That is what could happen in QQQ right here. See, the, everything has these bearish rising wedges, uh, and those were you know overshoots and bull traps, and we could see that now in the general in in you know the the general market. Here's the futures. NASDAQ broke down yesterday or the day before from this rising uh, trend line and we're back testing it right now. It seems to have recovered it, but we'll see. Could, uh, you know, could fail right here. But ES is, um, you, you know, this is the um, S&P 500 futures is just shooting higher pretty aggressively. So there's even though the NASDAQ futures broke down, you know, what I'm waiting for now, given that the markets are just showing a lot of resiliency, I'm waiting for breakdowns in kind of across the board. So I've got my top four, NQ, ES, QQQ, and SPY. I need to see breakdowns or bull traps set across the board um, in, in all four of those in order to take up the next short position, just to give us a little higher probability that the next short trade will work. Um, I'm not interested in being long. I explained that yesterday, even though the market's running higher. Yes, I, I realize that there are some profits to be made. Uh, I just think there's limited profits to be made and I don't want to be caught at the tail end of a move. I want to, you know, get positioned at the beginning of a big move. So, um, that's, I, I don't chase when things run against me or run higher and I've missed the trade maybe. I don't chase it. I just let that. I just let it go and wait for the next major move. Okay, let's move to gold real quick. Gold's starting to break down a little bit, and if we look at like Barrett Gold, we're starting to get into the area where I'm becoming interested in buying. Um, you know, we've had a decent pullback right here. This this pullback from the high. Uh, again, I sold it at 28.20 right up here at the top, and the pullback. Uh, is 21 percent now so good exit um, and I'm looking to start the cycling back in uh, what am I looking for well you know we've got these price zones right here at 20 you know about 22 40 down to uh, 21 you know maybe about 20 50 that's a buy zone 
Uh, I think I have it marked out kind of like right within here. So we're starting to enter my buy zone. And so what I'm gonna do is watch the price action here, uh, start to look to add positions uh, and, and, uh, and then watch it. I don't think I'll be buying anything below the $20 range, uh, but looking to start adding and building back this position. Um, this has been a really good trader for me over the last few years. So uh, I'm looking to uh, cycle back in for the next leg higher. Um, this is in a bull market. So understand gold is in a bull market and you buy when you come down to support. So here's gold futures and, uh, oh, sorry, gold bullion. And, you know, we're coming down. So we've got some support down here at 1640 major support at 1570. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm watching this one. If if gold bullion wants to fall down to 1570, that is a great buying area. Uh, I don't know if we'll get that low. I think 1640 might be the area we get to and we're almost there. So probably get a reaction around 1640. You can see this cluster of reactions right here that we had. Um, and then it was resistance right through here. And if I move this one out, you can see it held a support. It was resistance, resistance, then it was support. Now we're coming back to it. So that might be it. So that's why I'm looking at starting to um, buy into these gold miners on this weakness. Again, I like to buy on weakness, sell on strength. So that's kind of how I trade. If that doesn't mesh with your own style, then that's fine. You might be more of a momentum trader, but I prefer to be a contrarian trader. I look for opportunities to buy weakness and sell strength. All right, that's it, guys. I'm going to get the video out. Thanks. Give me a thumbs up if you like the content.